Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video we will be talking about all the books that I read in September and my plans for October. So hey, what's up? How are you? I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. As you can see, we are in front of my bookshelf. <laughs> If anyone is out there right now and you happen to be thinking about doing a whole new house renovation as well as planning a wedding, don't freaking do it. <laughs> it's too much and I am overwhelmed. <laughs> Hence why my books are still in stinking boxes. <laughs> it's been an absolute wild couple months. So let's talk about what happened last month in September. Life-wise, September was a mess. <laughs> the beginning of September, I got COVID and I was down for the count. Absolutely devastatingly ill. <laughs> so that took up um, the first quarter of the month. I, I couldn't focus on a thing. The first like two weeks of September, I read one book and it was 158 pages. <laughs> and that book was What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. This one, I was a guest host on the Literally Dead Book Club hosted by Books and Lala. And it was also my Nightcrawler Patreon book club pick as well. So I, I had to at least get through this one. <laughs> this one is a retelling on The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. And I had the short story handy in this, uh, this book. It's it's only like a 20 page short story or something like that. I really tried to read it, but it was towards the end of my being really, really sick and my brain could not do it. <laughs> I got through like five pages and I was like, <laughs> So I just put it down and I turned on the audiobook for What Moves the Dead and decided to just listen and tandem read this one. That was the only way I was getting through it. <laughs> and I did, and it was fine. I know I've already talked about uh, Teen Kingfisher's other book that I've read, which was Nettle and Bone. Absolutely loved it. I gave it like four and a half stars. This one, I didn't, didn't love entirely. However, there were parts that I absolutely loved. The parts of the story that were like very eerie and spooky and a little bit grotesque and descriptive, 10 out of 10, really, great. Made me kind of like feel a little gross. <laughs> and that's what I was hoping for. Um, it didn't happen as often as I was expecting. I thought that I was going to be getting the level of atmosphere that I got while I was reading Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marino Garcia. And I didn't. I did not get the atmosphere. And maybe it's because it's such a short story and they didn't have time to really build up that level of atmosphere. But I genuinely just kind of think that there could have been a little bit more done with the like overarching weird eerie feeling. So I was just a little bit let down by the overall atmosphere of the story, but the storytelling elements were really fun. I liked how things progressed and ended up getting intertwined and the resolution of the story, the little plot twists that came to light regarding the fungi and the rabbits and the lake and the house and people itself. Like it was fun, but it wasn't as spooky or atmospheric as I thought it would be. So I gave it a three out of five, which is still fine. But honestly, I would say read Mexican Gothic over this one. You'll find out really quickly how short this wrap up is. I, I didn't even mention that. Um, yeah, there's really only like one and a half other books that I'm gonna talk about, which is why I'm doing my wrap up and kind of TBR, so to say, in the same video. We'll get to the TBR when we get there because you're probably like, City, this is two months in a row. You haven't done your TBR game and we'll talk about it. But in September, I also did read The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. And this one, guys, guys, <laughs> I really loved it. I really loved it. I, I really did. In this one, our main character is Art Barbara, and he is a high school age kid when the book starts out, and he is trying to get into colleges, but his counselor or principal or someone is saying that he needs to like up his resume. He needs to have some sort of like extracurricular activity because he's really good in the classroom, but he doesn't have anything outside of that really. So he starts his own club, which is the Paul Bearers Club, and he like partners with a local funeral home, and the people in this club would attend funerals for people people who don't really have anyone, any loved ones or anyone attending their service, as well as being a pallbearer, you know, carrying the casket to the hearse, I almost said urn. <laughs> Not correct. And one of the people who join this Paul Bearers Club is someone who doesn't even go to the high school. She is like young in college or something. And her name is Mercy. And Mercy and Art become really quick friends, but weird things are happening when Mercy is around. And she is taking pictures, like Polaroid snap pictures of everything that's going on in the Paul Bearers Club, including pictures of the corpse while they are in their casket. And it's strange. Art is not really sure what's going on. And now in this story, Art does 
decades later, is writing a memoir-esque story about his time in the Paul Bearers Club and kind of just like of his life. And what is going on is Mercy finds the memoir and she is reading it and she is not happy with how things are being portrayed. <laughs> so in the story, you will see that there are a bunch of like red pen annotations that is Mercy talking through the story as she's reading it and interjecting and saying like, this was incorrect or this is how I remember that that situation. And at the end of each chapter, she also has a few pages sometimes of like her own part of the story. Like sometimes it gets really long and it's really fun. It was a lot of fun. I loved it so much because both of them are pointing fingers at each other. Neither one of our narrators are super reliable. So you don't really know what exactly is the truth until the very end. The audiobook is really phenomenal because both Art and Mercy have different narrators. So you can really hear when Mercy is interjecting via audiobook and it's it's fun. In the beginning, I wasn't entirely sure how I was gonna feel about it. I didn't know if Mercy interjecting was going to take me out of the story, but it actually kind of enhanced it because Mercy is hilarious. It was really a treat to have such different people telling you uh, kind of the same story, but in different ways. And I also wanna say that Paul Tremblay, big ups to him on this story personally, I think, because the voices in which he wrote both characters were so different and really, really well done. This one is not necessarily like a fast paced thriller at all, nor is it like super horror at all. <laughs> I don't really know what to necessarily categorize it as. Maybe like slow burn horror, I guess. Cause I know that he writes like thrillers, right? <laughs> but I really loved it. In case you're wondering, I gave it five out of five. The other book that I finished in September that I started probably almost two months ago, was Malice by John Gwynn. This is part of a secret reading vlog that I'm working on, so I'm not gonna tell you any thoughts, but I did finish it. Finally, this stinking chunker took me so long. It's high fantasy, and it's not one that I could just listen to solely, so I had to sit down and read it, and I have had really hardly any time to actually sit and read physically in the last few months. So anytime that I did, I was reading this. My patrons will laugh at that comment because probably for a month and a half of our reading sprints, I was only reading Malice. <laughs> so the question was like, what are you reading today? I'm reading Malice every single stinking time. But I finally finished it. Feels great to be done. Excited to continue the series, but that is what I will leave you with for this one. And now we can move on into what's happening in October. Why aren't you doing your Spin the Bottle TPR, Sydney? That is because this next Next month is this month. Oh my God, we are in wedding month. <laughs> And that's really the reason why, because I really don't foresee myself having a whole bunch of time to read in this first half of the month. Because let me tell you, this week I have to work my job while finalizing pretty much everything for the wedding this week. I'm meeting with vendors every single day. I'm doing reading sprints with my patrons. And then on Friday night, Caleb and I are driving with our pets. Caleb, Caleb is not my pet. <laughs> Avi and Juno up to my parents' house two and a half hours away because on Saturday morning we are leaving for our like pre-honeymoon trip. Some of you are probably like, Sydney, why would you go on a trip a week before your wedding? That's probably more stressful. But let me tell you why we're going through with it. Story time. Back in 2020, Caleb and I bought tickets for this concert at Red Rocks in Colorado. In case you were wondering, it is King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. They are absolutely incredible. Listen to Nonagon Infinity, Sketches of East Brunswick, KG and LW, those two respective albums, great. Butterfly 3000, all of those are absolutely incredible. This group can range from jazz to heavy death metal. They do everything. They are amazing. This is a foundation band for Caleb and I. When we first started dating, we were listening to the album Nonagon Infinity literally all the time. In fact, one of the songs on that album, Gamma Knife, will be the song that we play when we are finally announced as husband and wife at our wedding. So this group means a whole lot to us. And it's at Red Rocks in Colorado, like seeing Seeing them at this venue is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It is a marathon set. So it's a Monday and Tuesday night concert, which is even cooler. And so we got these tickets back in 2020 and then obviously the Panini hit. So then the concert was postponed to 2021 and everything was still not under control. Is it now? Not really, but it got postponed again to this year and it is a week before our wedding. <laughs> at least it's not the week of, honestly, cause then we might've not been able to go but we're going, oh, I'm, oh, we're going. <laughs> but we are broke. So we are driving to Colorado. That's like 16 hours, which 
it really isn't terrible. We like each other, we like road trips. So we are going to drive starting Saturday morning. We're gonna drive 10 hours the first day, six hours the next day, and then we'll be in Colorado for the Monday, Tuesday concert. And then we drive back Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> then we're picking up our rings. Our jeweler has them ready. He just had to make a couple different little tweaks for the sizing on Caleb's and the metal on mine just needed to be thinned out a little bit. So we're gonna pick up those after our little like vacation. And by the time we get back home here, it'll be T minus one week until the wedding. <laughs> I have low hopes for how many books I'm gonna read this month, which is a bummer because October is like the best reading month. It's so exciting. It's very spooky. Like fall is everything. It is my favorite thing in the world. Hence why I wanna get married in the fall, honestly. So will I experience a lot of spooky books? No, but will I have a insanely awesome folly perfect wedding? Yes, but I do have some mild reading goals for October and I'm gonna tell you about them. <laughs> First of all, we will be in the car for about 16 hours there and back. And Caleb and I want to finish the Southern Reach trilogy by Jeff Vandermeer. So I'm going to get those on audiobook and we probably will finish those on the way out, honestly. <laughs> the Southern Reach trilogy starts with Annihilation and it's all about this place called Area X and our main characters are five or six women, I believe, I think it's five or six that are like a biologist, a de facto leader, a psychologist, a surveyor, and an anthropologist. And their mission is to map the terrain and collect all of this information about Area X and come back unscathed and uninfected, sort of. We both read Annihilation already and we both gave it five out of five. Absolutely so much fun. Super weird, very heavy on the like stream of consciousness writing style because our narrator is kind of using the book as her like pen pad, like all of her findings. And it was just so much fun. Super short, interesting, thrilling, weird, and a little bit eerie. It was great, loved it. We're gonna continue that series in October on our road trip. Another book that I wanna try to get Caleb to listen to with me on our road trip is A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill. I know this has been on my TBR for the last three months don't look at me. <laughs> but I actually did start this this past month. My two best friends and I drove to Nashville together and met the other gals who were meeting us there. And on the way back, we like ran out of music to listen to. We didn't want to listen to any podcasts. And I had this already downloaded on Libby. So we started to listen to it. We got about two and a half hours in. I'm really enjoying it so far. This light right here is not the vibe. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. And I think that it is a writing style and has content matter that Caleb would really enjoy because he doesn't like scary movies, but he does like scary books. And this one definitely has some weird things going on where there's this family who creates this like haunted house experience, but the demons and like monsters that are being seen are actually real. Like they are seeing these monsters physically. And our main character is Noah, who is a son of the parents who like are creating this like shrine for these monsters that the father created. And Noah is letting these monsters in. He's like interacting with them, but things are happening to this family and it's spooky. Spooky. It's crazy. I'm excited to continue it. I'm gonna obviously start it over from the beginning so that Caleb gets the full experience, but I'm excited about this and I will hopefully definitely finish it in October. <laughs> Another book that I started in September that I will finish in October, mostly because it was my September book club pick is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I'm really only like 65 pages in right now. I haven't had time to read, <laughs> but I am enjoying it so far. I'm really loving how I can really tell that it's R.F. Kuang's writing. And I'm only like 65 pages in or so, so I don't have too many concrete thoughts to tell you, but I am enjoying being in one of R.F. Kuang's worlds again. And I'm excited to see what she does with Dark Academia. So I will be finishing that in October. And while we are on the subject of my book club, I will also obviously <laughs> be reading those two picks. So we have the book club pick, which is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I've been trying to get this one on a TBR for a while now, and I'm very excited to be reading it alongside my patrons and chatting about it. This one says, a college reunion turns dark and deadly in this chilling and propulsive suspense novel about six friends, one unsolved murder, and the dark secrets they've been hiding from each other and themselves for a decade. I live for the books where there's a group of people who all have secrets. You, you are bound to have a ton of drama and I live for that. I love thrillers where you can't really trust people. It makes it just this extra level of intrigue and spice, if you will. So I am really excited to get into this 
story and see what all of this drama is that is bound to unfold. The buddy read pick for my book club is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I've had a 50-50 shot so far with Grady Hendrix. I liked My Best Friend's Exorcism, but I didn't love it. And then I really did love The Final Girl Support Group. So I'm really hoping that this one falls in the latter. This is one of those booktube classic books, I believe. I see it all over the place. I hear really great things about it. And I am excited to try out another one of Grady Hendrix's books. This sun right now, I'm moving you. Hello. The little like catchphrase synopsis of the story is a Southern flavored supernatural thriller set in the 90s about a woman's book club that must protect its suburban community from a mysterious and handsome stranger who turns out to be a blood sucking fiend. I know that Grady Hendrix writes nostalgia insanely well. So the fact that it's set in the 90s, there will obviously be a bunch of that nostalgia and atmospheric things that he's really good at. I love stories about vampires as well. I like werewolves more, but vampires are a close second. And I also love the prospect of this woman's book club group like taking out this vampire and all of the drama and shenanigans and thrilling things that will entail alongside that story. So I think that it'll be fun and I just hope it's as good as everyone says it is. <laughs> and then let me tell you about one other book that I really would love to get to in October. Do you see how many books like I still freaking put on my TBR even though I'm getting heckin married like I won't have time. <laughs> But let me tell you about one more. <laughs> and that is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. Alexis Henderson wrote Year of the Witching. Whatever year it came out, I read it that October, loved it five out of five. I still recommend that book to this day for anyone who wants like a culty, witchy, atmospheric read. It was great. So now Alexis Henderson has this new book, House of Hunger. The cover, just as stunning as The Year of the Witching. In the story, we have our main character, Marion Shaw, who lives in the slums and really only knows like what deprivation feels like. She really wants to get out of the place that she's living, but there is no like prospects of that until she finds a listing in the paper seeking a blood maid. Though she knows little about the far north where wealthy nobles live, in luxury and drink the blood of those in their service, Marion applies to the position. In a matter of days, she finds herself the newest blood maid at the notorious House of Hunger. There, Marion is swept into a world of dark debauchery. At the center of it all is Countess Elizabeth. The Countess, who presides over the hedonistic court, is loved and feared in equal measure. She takes a special interest in Marion. Livisette is magnetic, and Marion is eager to please her new mistress. But when she discovers that the ancient walls of the House of Hunger hide even older secrets, Marion is thrust into a vicious game of cat and mouse. She'll need to learn the rules of her new home and fast or its walls will soon become her grave. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> the way that Alexis Henderson wrote Year of the Witching, if any of those like vibes and atmosphere are involved in the story, which I guarantee it is, I am in for a great read. I'm, I'm so excited about it. So I really need to try to get to it in October. And of course, there are other books that I really hoped to get to in October. Low expectations for these ones because I really don't even know if I'll have time to finish what I already talked about. But Sundial by Katarina Ward is one that I would really love to get to, as well as The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. And then of course, Alice Feeney's newest book, Daisy Darker. I would love to get to that as well. I mean, hey, also, I mean, Dead Astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer. This is an oldie, but I, me and Caleb both really want to read this one too. Caleb might actually request this one on our road trip. He's talked about it in the last couple weeks, <laughs> so we'll see. But that is all that I have for you guys today. So thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video down below. I hope to see you guys in my next video. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.